Mazda, the small Japanese car maker from Hiroshima, Japan, is ready to take on the future. Once known for their high revving rotary engines and zoom zoom fun to drive nature, Mazda is taking a step into a new era of electrification with premium products and high class designs. <laughs> Over at the Mazda newsroom, they have a, a small write-up here, but they had a about a 35-minute video here that I pulled a bunch of slides from. So we're going to go to the slides that I took screenshots from and break down where Mazda is headed in the future. If you're new to the channel, my name's Kirk. I talk about Japanese and Korean cars all the time. If you enjoy that, hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe, hit the bell icon, because there will be an announcement in the next couple months about an upcoming Mazda vehicle. Let your imagination run wild, and we'll talk maybe just briefly about what it could be here in a little bit. But let's start with Mazda here and their view of the company and how it evolves by 2030. And there's a, we got about, I don't know, 20 plus slides to sift through today. So make sure you have your snacks and drinks. And let's go. Now this big reveal from now until 2030 was supposed to be in the spring, but things keep changing in the world as we know it. More lockdowns continue in China. The war rages on in Europe. So there's a lot of uncertainty still, especially with the looming uh, economic issues in the near, near future that we're already starting to experience. So, and they began all their slides with what is 2030 gonna look like? Well, consumer choices will continue to change electricity supply infrastructure needs to get better there is going to be an evolution of battery technology uh, that's going to happen very rapidly from now until 2030 and a change in power mix from fossil fuels to more clean uh, sources more renewable sources so they have three phases on how they want to attack this electrification uh, transformation as a brand we're still in phase one and they have of course two more phases after that so phase one, enhanced technology development for the age of electrification. And they talk about the US plant as well as the introduction of large product models. The CX-60 is already available uh, in Europe and other parts of the world on this large architecture. There's gonna be CX-70 that we're gonna get here in the United States. So the CX-90 should be announced first because they need to replace the CX-9 uh, three row crossover. So I think that CX-90 is gonna be the next up. Um, exported from Japan into America. Now they also make the CX-50 here at the US plant. They're having an issue staffing there because unemployment so low in Alabama at that Toyota Mazda plant that they're having issues getting people to put vehicles together. That's what we're working on right now. And by the end of 2024, we should have CX-70, CX-90 here on the market uh, and CX-60, CX-80 in the global markets. Phase two, battery procurement. We'll talk about where they're getting their batteries here in a little bit. Enhancement of battery technology development. Everyone needs better batteries. We know that. Advanced launch of BEVs later half of phase two. Now they have an additional slide here talking about the building block concept for products and technologies. Their small pod product group is on a couple of different platforms at this point in time. The CX-5 is on a different platform. Let's say the CX-50, but the CX-50's platform is uh, shared with the CX-30, the Mazda 3. So that's, and, and even the MX-30, I believe at that point. So this is the foundation, the small product group, then the large product group with the more premium products. With the upgraded eight-speed auto, we have a mild hybrids and plug-in hybrids, inline six turbos, inline six turbo diesels, plug-in hybrid four cylinders, et cetera. And this is gonna be the next wave that we're, we'll get very excited for. And then we don't know really anything about their scalable, E, uh, sky active scalable e ev architecture at this point in time but it will be probably by the second half they say of phase two so by 2026 2027 we'll start seeing their ev platform um, coming from either japan and they've talked about making it here in the united states as well i mean it would have to be at that alabama plant unless they build an all-new ev plant which i guess is a possibility but don't think they are going to do that and more than likely would either they would either come from mexico where they make the, C the mazda 3 and C cx30 or those evs would come from the alabama plant alongside the cx50 for example now phase three 2028 to 2030 full-scale launch of BEVs. Now they want to be carbon neutral entirely by 2050, but by 2035, they want to be carbon neutral at their factories. So they're hoping to be carbon neutral with energy conservation, renewable energy, and carbon neutral fuels by 2035. Here's a cool little diagram of the, the their idea, their perfect idea of uh, a more sustainable energy future. And they also want to be very much like Toyota. 
go figure because Toyota is uh, a big investor and owns a big stake in Mazda. So they have they want to see a multiple multiple solution future. So EVs are a part of it. They are going to bring back the rotary engine. So we're going to take a sidestep real quick. And they're and Motor One's uh, reporting that the MX30 REV with a rotary engine as a kind of like a range extender. But definitely stay tuned. I'll give you guys more updates on that rotary extender as things become more concrete here. Also in phase two, they want to have a brand new hybrid system or hybrid technology that we haven't seen yet. It could be a lot like Toyota's. That would make mo the most sense. Um, and then you also have the diesels that they're planning to keep with Skyactiv X, which I don't know if we'll ever see here in North America. You also have Skyactiv G that, of course, is everywhere. Previously to this announcement, they were only going to be at 25% BEV saturation uh, with their lineup by 2030. Now they're saying it could be as high as 40%. So they're being uh, trying to be as flexible as possible with the uncertain future. Um, there, there's that slide. They're talking about the new hybrid system. Now, this was exciting to me as they gear up for electrification, and they're working with all these Japanese companies to produce inverters, to produce drive units or e axles, uh, to produce batteries, and to have. I think uh, they're working with Rome here or ROM. Not sure how you say it for silicon carbide semiconductors. That's a mouthful, and that will help improve efficiencies uh, as well as reduce costs. So. Yes, if, if you really like your vehicles to be as Japanese as possible, Mazda is going more Japanese than ever, as we'll see here in a second. Obviously, with this slide, it's a big part of it. We talked about silicon carbide semiconductors, but they're also going to be investing in next generation battery technology. There's also a possibility that they could build their own batteries. In the meantime, they're going to be working with Envision, which is Chinese owned, but they're made in Japan. Uh, this is the battery company that Nissan started up and then had to sell it. And they know they need to massively change how they uh, design their vehicles, starting with product planning on the value chain all the way through sales and services. And they also need to completely radically restructure their supply chain because essentially China is making it very difficult for everyone uh, with especially with semiconductors. Previously, they had way too many suppliers, too many steps, and that of course is going to take profit of profit away. Think of this as the game telephone. You have all these people sit around a table, and then you have all these mix-ups and communications. It's just very, very inefficient. Now Maz is like, hey, we need to cut out one tier of suppliers completely and just reduce the amount of suppliers in total. So they're only going to go have one tier one supplier, two tier twos, and just a small amount of tier three or further down the line. So yes, that's what they need to do to be cost competitive and also just to survive in an EV market. But also you have to keep in mind, BEVs require far fewer parts uh, than combustion engine vehicles. So this is going to help them shore up the parts they need without like splitting their energies too far. It looks like two thirds of the parts are either come from China or Southeast Asia. Instead, they're going to be trying to source these parts from other places. It looks like the springs were coming from China, but they're like, no, we need to get our springs from Hokkaido. That's uh, that's going to work better for us. But the spark plugs, maybe they're coming from the Pacific Islands. I know this isn't a direct to scale. I'm just kind of having some fun with it. Have less dependence on China essentially. And let's not assemble all these parts that we need out of state or out of country. Let's just bring them to Japan to simplify the process, take out those steps. Now the little video here, this is all we, they show of their BEV platform, just a few seconds. How it's scalable, it can widen, it can lengthen. They don't even show all wheel drive here. They just show a front wheel drive setup which is kind of unfortunate if you ask me, but you know, I'm sure they will be able to have all wheel drive uh, electric vehicles. We just don't have any evidence of it right now. As a lover of the MX-5 and also their previous RX ve vehicles, seeing this vehicle, this is really the only thing they teased for future vehicles. This thing has doors that open up like a Lamborghini. This thing is stunning and it's not a convertible. It looks like a future iteration of an RX-7 uh, or an RX-8. I'm just going to call RX-9. We have green lights in the back here. We also have Mazda stamped out into the rear. So we could see Mazda getting away from having the Mazda logo on their future vehicles, kind of like how Lexus has gone to Lexus lettering instead of the Lexus logo. Uh, with the rear taillights here, it kind of reminds me of the current MX-5, or, or should I say all MX-5s in the past with these dual lights. But since 
It is a coupe and not a convertible. This is not an MX-5, but we could see some uh, design pieces from it uh, in the future of the MX-5, for example. Now, they only showed two official images and they the rest I had to take from uh, the video, which was very disjointed and showing mostly people and how Mazda can enhance the lives of people. But we have uh, the image here that has, which is almost like an homage, an allusion to the pop-up headlights of the NA Miata, uh, also the RX-7 it's of old. We also have illuminated Mazda badge here with a little wing in front. We don't, I'm assuming this is a battery electric vehicle. Really, this is all that we had to see. Uh, they showed it on a smartphone. I don't know what's going on here. There's no battery pack underneath, but there's also no gasoline engine here. So I would assume this is uh, an electric vehicle, but at the same time, it's really hard to say. Are the batteries tucked in behind her? Therefore, they might have the best weight distribution as more of a traditional rear wheel drive setup. It's really hard to say with this concept, and I don't even see, is that a front motor? It's just really hard to tell. Again, a concept vehicle. Hopefully we start seeing some of these designs though. This, gosh, this is stunning. We saw those uh, Vision concepts a few years back, what, 2017, something like that. The Vision Coupe concept as well. Um, we really never saw that design language be fully played out. It looks like Mazda's already moving forward. Kind of, I mean, I, I get a lot of, of that smooth running nature of the 90s vehicles here, and it's very, very pretty. I just wish we had more high resolution images of this bad boy. So what do you guys think of Mazda's future? I think it's gonna be fun. It'll be exciting. It really, I'm just, I love anything Mazda. So I think they're on the right track. Do you think 40% BEV's best case scenario for them is gonna be enough by 2030? I think it is, maybe even more than enough, but it's really hard to say where the market's going to go. Everything is so uncertain in the future when it comes to uh, energy as well as fuel like gasoline is prices or anything, but certain, the economy is definitely uncertain, but I don't think it's gonna get that bad. That's, you know, fingers crossed. But it looks like Mazda is gonna continue with that more premium approach as, yeah, it's more profitable in theory, even though they're not selling as quite as much volume as they used to. But the Japanese automakers are gonna be a little bit behind, but yes, they're all very cautious. They're all very conservative. They kind of wait to see where the market goes and then they go full ham. Uh, investing as much as they can in order to have the best products, the most uh, reliable products and the best built products. But we'll, we'll see. Times are changing. The market's changing. Technology's changing. And here we have Mazda doing their best as a small manufacturer out of Southern Japan. I'll end it there. Have a great day. Take care of yourselves and peace.